Yellowstone is truly one of our nation's treasures. It's home to 50% of the world's active geysers. It's home to bison herds that have continuously grazed its valleys since prehistoric times. There are endless miles of scenic beauty and the reason for my journey to Yellowstone and the surrounding area, the opportunity to fish for both native cutthroat and wild populations of rainbow and brown trout in some of the world's best fly fishing rivers, lakes, and streams. So here's the plan. I have a reservation for a week of fishing in Yellowstone. It's mid-June, so under normal seasonal conditions, there are only really three rivers in the park that are fishable. The Firehole, the Gibbon, and the Madison. For this reason, I made reservations to set up my base camp at the Madison Campground, conveniently located at the confluence of these rivers. The other rivers in the park, the Lamar, Yellowstone, Gartner, etc., will be flooded and very cloudy due to the runoff of snow from the mountains, which I was okay with because the Firehole River is my first choice. The Firehole River is it's unique among trout streams worldwide with dramatic scenery as it runs right by several major geysers and hot springs in the park, such as Old Faithful and Grand Prismatic Spring. I spent the night in Livingston, Montana, got up early in the morning and drove south through Pleasant Valley, following the Yellowstone River to Gartner, Montana, and the north entrance of Yellowstone, early enough to avoid the crowds and grab a cup of coffee before entering the park. You gotta just be a little careful sometimes when you get out of your car, you gotta look around a little bit around here. <laughs> You remember you're sharing these parking lots now. Since I had a few hours to kill before check-in at Madison Campground, I thought I would head up the Firehole River and scope out the areas I planned to fish. When you're new to a river, it's not a bad idea to take a little time to get a feel for the river's structure, its runs, its, its riffles, its pools, where the fish might be holding or rising what insects are hatching, and if you're lucky, you know, possibly learn from the people with more experience who are fishing the river. <laughs> and wouldn't you know it, I get stuck in a bison jam. And if you've ever been to Yellowstone, you know what I'm talking about. Bison jams, bear jams. And that guy on the bicycle that just drove by, <laughs> I hope it's not a bear jam, <laughs> like, like a grizzly bear on the side of the road. <laughs> After the traffic started moving again, I was able to turn off onto the old freight road to an area known as Fountain Flats. One of the areas I planned to fish, and clearly this was the reason for the bison jam. I had heard that bison can be a little predictable, so I made a mental note of the time around 9.30 a.m. and decided that if I'm gonna fish this area, I'll need to do it a lot earlier or Perhaps it might be a good site, you know, in the evening. It looks like they're moving. I probably should have parked back there. Oh, I can always turn around. I'm walking, Palmer's practically walking over them. Little babies. After checking out the Fountain Flats area and getting some advice on where fishing guides take their clients to fish, I got back in my car and headed up to Biscuit Basin. I chose these spots because they're uh, in an open area with plenty of visibility. The last thing I want to do is surprise any of the large animals Yellowstone is known for. From what I've read, Biscuit Basin is one of the more challenging sections of the Firehole River. The river here has a few deep runs and holes and is reputed to hold some of the larger trout. For this reason, Biscuit Basin gets 
more fishing pressure and attracts more experienced fly fishermen, resulting in the trout being a little skittish and becoming a little savvy themselves. That's my, uh, my marmot buddy. I think that's the mum. And um, there was another one that was in there underneath that juniper bush. But let me show you where the, uh, um, well, this is my camp site. And I've got the tent all set up. What I like about this tent is uh, it actually has a screen porch. So that can close internally. Uh, and I've got a nice, you know, cot in there and a table and, you know, all the luxury items that you'd expect to have on a nice safari, right? <laughs> But um, let me first show you. So this is marmot land, and the locals here call them whistling pigs because they make a little whistle sound. But I know there's babies in this little hole right here because they stuck their head out earlier with mom. And then they got more holes. Luckily, they don't dig in under the gravel that the, uh, the campground folks give you to set up your tent. But as you can see, it's, uh, it's quite a little marmot place. And they eat grass and stuff like that. This looks like the king of the marmots must live in here. This is a big hole, right? But uh, they're all around here. So I'm sure I'll be doing some videos of the marmots. Also, this is my bear box where I keep my food and anything that smells sweet, toothpaste, all kinds of stuff. And while I was sitting here, I noticed that I have another mum and She's got a nest right in there. I don't see her now, but she was sitting there today while I was here. So maybe out looking for some food or something. Anyway, I'm cooking myself up some dinner. I got some uh, homemade uh, chili that I'm cooking. I, I mean uh, Hormel. Yeah, I don't know how I'm. I i do not know how I keep making that mistake, you know. <laughs> but uh, gonna do that. And then I've got to got to work on some of my fly lines and. Get ready for some uh, filming uh, tomorrow. I went up to uh, Biscuit Basin and checked it out. And I saw some trout and I saw where they were hiding. And so I think maybe what I should do is, um, or where they were feeding, maybe what I should do tomorrow is just go up really early in the morning and, um, you know, see if we can't uh, catch some, uh, some they, look, they look pretty nice too for, uh, for the Firehall River. They look like about a foot long each. There was, there was a whole bunch of them. So, but the water is very warm and it's very low. So. Uh, not a lot of people fishing it, and uh, expectations are not high from those that are fishing it. So, but we'll see. I got a week. It's about 6 o'clock in the morning, June uh, 15th, and it's a little colder outside <laughs> than these thermals, and as a result, get a little spectacular sort of view of the steam rising that normally you might not even see because it starts to warm up during the day. At least I didn't see this kind of activity yesterday when it was like 90 degrees. <laughs> well, I'm here at uh, Biscuit Basin. As you can see, it's pretty early in the morning. I'm going to try a, a, a little caddis a merger. I mean, I'm sorry, um, yeah, an emerger. I tried the caddis spent and I really couldn't even see it uh, this early in the morning and I'm not seeing any rises so I think this might be a little more effective and I'll use it as a search pattern for this area and we'll, we'll see how that works out. Since I'm not seeing any rises, trout eating insects on or near the surface, I have a couple of choices. I can tie on a large mayfly or caddis pattern with a foam body and, and use it like a strike indicator with a weighted nymph trailing underneath. Or I can choose a very popular method of fishing the fire hole, which is to swing a wet fly by casting a fly that imitates either a small bait fish or an emerging insect 
uh, floating to the surface. You cast the fly out, keep in a tight line, and let it drift down to where you suspect the trout are holding. As the fly swings across the current, you lift your rod, which imitates a, a nymph fluttering to the surface, or you can strip your line, strip in your line, which might in, uh, imitate a bait fish or uh, a nymph swimming across the stream. No, no one really knows why it works, but you cover a lot of water, it's relaxing, and by keeping a tight line, the trout often hook themselves. As you can see here, the Firehole River is splitting into two sections. Uh, so I'm having to mend my line to keep my fly drifting in the slower water in the middle of the river to the point where I want to swing the fly down and across the faster current uh, into the near bank. My goal is to swing the fly in front of where I see uh, the beginning of a riffle as um, trout occasionally position themselves in front of like say submerged boulders or whatever's causing that riffle and if that doesn't produce a strike I simply move down a few feet and swing my fly behind the submerged boulder which is another good uh, trout holding spot. Well, it's time to take a few steps and move down the river a little further and try swinging um, my emerger uh, just behind the, um, these, uh, these boulders at the, at the start of this ripple. I just noticed a large male bison, uh, buffalo bison, down the river just here a little bit. You probably can't see it because of uh, this wide angle uh, camera lens, but uh, it's, it's a lot closer than, uh, than, it, than it appears. Uh, got one.
You can see that, my first uh, Yellowstone trout. Let's get it in quickly. Looks like a uh, brown trout. I actually had to lie down on the side of the bank uh, to net the fish as well as to wet my hands before handling it. Um, but because the water is so low um, because of the drought conditions out here. But you have to do what you have to do. Uh, nice brown trout. And it looks like the looks like I still the hook released on its own. Where where that where did that big male buffalo go? <laughs> yeah, while I was um, fixing the, my reel, you know, mount uh, was a little loose. I I saw this big big buffalo that was like right over there somewhere. <laughs> And now I don't see it, right? So I don't know if he's making its way. They're really dark, so when they get into the shadows. I don't know if he's making his way up here. I don't see him. But what I'm going to do, the plan now is I'm going to cast a few more, swing, swing a few more of the uh, caddis emergers uh, in here. And maybe I'll get, you know, another nice brown one. But I'm seeing, I'm seeing some rises just up there near the tip of that structure. And they're, they're not consistent, but I saw a couple in a row. So I'm going to work my way slowly up there. And, and I'm also sort of looking to see if there was a place where it might be easy to get into the, into the water here so I have a little more, a little more freedom, a, little more, a few more options. It started to get really windy as I moved upstream. The uh, Firehall River has a reputation for strong winds. But before heading out, I decided to give it one more try near where I parked my car uh, in the Biscuit Basin parking lot. <laughs> Two good reasons for fishing the, the river early. The wind picks up and the parking lot fills up as the sun rises. That didn't take long. Little brown trout, and he got himself off too, which was nice. Whew. Popped right at it. I don't know if I caught any of that on camera, but that was nice. Huh? <laughs> Second fish. Who'd have thought, right? And once again, it's the same fly. It was a caddis. Uh, it was that caddis emerger that I had tied on. Right here at the Biscuit uh, Basin. I mean, literally, this is almost as far up as you can f legally fish on the river.
another one. It feels bigger. Another brown trout. Quick release. Wow. That's three on this one little, that's three on this one little fly. And I was just about to quit. <laughs> of the wind. The reason why I chose this place to catch them is that I know the caddis have been hatching and this is a little emerger and, and caddis like to hatch in these little riffles, you know? So, you, you know, it's not only uh, fishing technique and the right fly to use. I mean, it's also uh, knowing where based on the types of insects and stuff that you've been seeing. <laughs> it is windy. sidearm cast try to keep the line low uh, Had a bite. I tried a few more casts, got a couple of bites, but with the wind picking up, I decided to head out, grab some lunch, and explore other areas of the park. Boy, beautiful scenery. Ooh, another bite. As the wind settled down, and the temperature dropped, I headed down to Madison Junction for some evening fishing. This is one of these options that I, I wish I could have every night. So I took advantage of camping nearby and probably fished this area four or five times in the week that I was here. Well, uh, it's beautiful. It's absolutely gorgeous. Sun's starting to set. I'm hoping that that little rise will start up again tonight. It's uh, oh, it's uh, 6.30. Last night was like around 8, 7.30, 8 o'clock. The river was just swarming with the caddis and, and the PMDs coming off. I think I said that earlier. But um, <laughs> I didn't see a lot of fish rising, but you can sort of see where that fellow is fishing right there. The only rise, I kind of marked it, was in between, see those little, um, the little strip of grass that's off the shore a bit there, and there's like one gap in the middle, just out beyond that by like about five, six, seven feet, there was a fish rising. So, you know, but
but I got all the time in the world. There's nothing going on right now. He, he's, he's nymphing. And, um, yeah, we can watch and see if he has any luck. Okay. Just swinging a caddis. And, uh, feels like a pretty good sized fish. Let's see what it is. Whoa, wow, it's a big fish. Whoa! That's a big... Boy, that's probably the biggest fish I've caught so far here at Yellowstone, that's for sure. I don't want to crank him in too much. It's like I might have snagged him now. Oh. Why it's fighting so hard. Yeah, I think I snagged him. Oh, damn. Oh, well. Let's let him go fast then. Oh, brown trout. Yeah, I snagged him a little bit. Sorry about that, fella. Yeah, I'll get that off of you soon. Oh, come on. Okay. In the second episode of my fishing adventure in Yellowstone, I head up to Fountain Flats on the Firehole River early in the morning to get in some fishing before the bison herd pushes me out, <laughs> which was earlier than expected. And then afterwards, I hike and fish the Gibbon River in the canyon below the scenic Gibbons Falls. And please subscribe to my channel for episode two and future episodes as I head out to fish the Ghost Village and West Fork sections of the Madison River, the Harriman Ranch section of Henry's Fork, and my quest for cutthroat trout on the Snake River and Soda Butte. Actually, I'm kind of blind down here. If I'm gonna change flies, I think I'm gonna do it and keep an eye on the buffalo herd. <laughs> in, case, in, case I, in case I walk up and uh, find them like all around me. Pretty much, wow, they move fast. They move really fast.